Here we go. And indeed, most of you chose B, and it is the same because it has the same number of turns per unit length, which is 100 turns per 0.5 meters, or uh, 300 for 1.5 meters. Very good. Now, we want our solenoids to do various things. Sometimes we use solenoids just to pick up stuff, like a big electromagnet at a, a junkyard, picking up a, a crunched up car and putting it in the car crusher machine. You've seen those, I'm sure, on TV or whatever, maybe even live and in person. How do you make that? Well, it turns out if you put uh, iron or steel or, or a, what we call a ferromagnetic material inside the solenoid, this dramatically increases the strength of the magnetic field. Ferromagnetic materials, if they're exposed to an external magnetic field, tend to create their own magnetic field uh, in response to it. They line up with it and give you, it sort of acts like a little amplifier for, uh, for uh, a magnetic field. Even if the, you know, the thing is not magnetized to begin with, once you put current through this coil, you create a huge magnetic field. So rather than just being this constant of nature mu naught times the number of turns per unit length times the current, that would be the, the magnetic field inside an air core solenoid. If you have an iron core solenoid, you get this enhancement factor K. And depending on you know, the type of iron and so forth, it can range from a few hundred to several thousand. So you can get you know, a thousand times bigger magnetic field just by sticking some iron in there. Now there's energy in a magnetic field and you need to put that energy into uh, creating that magnetic field by putting in the current, but for the same current uh, you'll, you'll get a much bigger magnetic field if you've got uh, a ferromagnetic material in it. And that's because in ferromagnetic materials the electron, the spins of the electrons are, are lining up. Well, what does that have to do with anything? How do we think about things on the microscopic level? Now, in, in magnetic materials, the magnetism is, uh, there are two possible sources for the magnetism, right? It could either be coming from the nucleus of the atoms inside, and we'll talk about that in a minute, or from the electrons. Turns out it's coming mainly from the electrons in ferromagnetic materials. Now, uh, electrons are acting like little magnets themselves. If you could uh, map out the magnetic field near an electron, it would look like a little dipole field with a certain what we call magnetic moment to it. Just like we have a dipole moment for a positive and negative electric charge, you can have a magnetic dipole moment as well that we can define. Well, how would, you, how would you get that? How does an electron make a, a magnet out of itself? Well, it kind of makes sense. If you can imagine that an electron is a little ball of charge, we know the electron has negative charge, right? If that ball is spinning, then you have sort of a current. The electri there, there's a net electric current, you know, sort of a loop uh, by the electron. That's not a bad model to have in your head for an electron, but there's a problem with it, as I'll tell you in a minute. You can imagine if this electron is a ball and it's made of charge and the charge is spinning, then you have a current. And if you have a, a current going in a loop like that or in a circle, it creates that magnetic field as we've seen by actually making them ourselves here. Now, um, we do, from lots of different experiments, we do know that the electron does have what we call intrinsic angular momentum, or spin is the shorthand a uh, word we use to describe that for a fundamental particle like an electron. It's as if something is spinning. However, there's a problem, and that's that uh, as far as we can tell, the electron is point-like. And we've measured this, or we've tested this down to the level of about 10 to the minus 19th centimeters or something like that by smashing together electrons and seeing if uh, we can break them apart or excite them, or, or various things, detect any size to the electron, uh, the answer is no, we can't. <laughs> and so we, as far as we can tell, experimentally, the electron is point-like. Nevertheless, it does have these properties of angular momentum, and it does have a magnetic moment. 
So it's, it's as if something is spinning. Now we can def describe this best using quantum mechanics. And uh, in fact, we need quantum mechanics to describe the observed properties of fundamental particles like electrons and also the quarks inside um, uh, protons and neutrons. So we're getting there. We, I think it's a bit of a mystery as to what it is that's spinning. We don't really have a model that tells us that. As I say, as far as we can tell, they're point-like particles and we model them as such, but we allow them to have intrinsic angular momentum and this magnetic moment. So uh, it's an open question in science and, and that's a good thing, right? Because it uh, gives people like me job security, right? <laughs> to have these questions. Okay, so if we think of electrons as being a bunch of little magnets all pointed in some direction, in a material like iron, let's say, uh, they tend to line each other up. You, you, you see that like a compass will align itself with a magnetic field. Nearby electrons tend to align with other nearby electrons. And so in some little region of this iron, they'll all be pointed in that direction. Then you'll find over here they're pointed in a different direction and so forth. It could be totally random. The net thing, the, the net uh, result is that there's no magnetic field surrounding this material because it, it all is random and jumbled and cancels, it, cancels out. So then what happens if you, um, if you put it in a magnetic field, they say, oh, I say, let's everybody point in this direction. And that enhances the existing, the pre-existing magnetic field by this factor K, which could, like I say, be a factor of a few hundred up to several thousand. So that's after the material is magnetized. Now certain materials can be magnetized in a permanent basis. Iron is one of them. If you heat it up, then these little domains and put it in a magnetic field, all these domains line up and then you cool it down, the, uh, the uh, magnet, the, the magnetization remains in the material after you cool it down and you have what we call a permanent magnet. Now there are other materials that can be permanent magnets like the ones down in front here. Uh, after lecture, I invite you to come down and feel just how strong the magnetic field can be from one of these. I think we had it out last week, but if you put it close here, you're going to, that's quite a big, you can pull the whole cart with this thing if you, if you want. It's a, quite a strong magnet. Uh, don't bring your credit cards or other magnetic uh, cards with you. It might erase them. <laughs>